they're there to win games. Like I don't, I, there, there, there is, I guess, a sense of you want to please the crowd and so on. But like, like, like you got to, you want to win trophies and you want to win, you want to win games. So if there's a style of play that is working better in a certain uh, area for you against certain teams, or if there's a style of play that you know you're more dominant at the moment, then you got to, you got to double down on that and and make it work for you. <laughs> George, mate, thank you. Where are you then? Set the scene, mate. I am in... Uh, are we straight on, are we? Uh, I'm in... What? No pre Cash, cash mate. No. Well, it, it all goes in anyway. It's cash with mates, aren't we? It's best mates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Uh, I'm in Ota, which is about an hour and a half outside of Tokyo. Um, quiet place, um, but like, you know, enough, decent enough stuff going on. Um, and above us are like mountains and stuff, below us Tokyo, so we're in a uh, tidy enough spot. Um, but yeah, it's just crackers, the whole thing's crackers so far. Tell me a little bit more about it, because we were chatting to Freddie Burns, or I was chatting to Freddie Burns, who I'm good yeah. mates with, and he's a, he's a funny character, and yeah. is clearly enjoying it. So for someone that's been in a bubble, and it's been a great bubble for many years, to... Yeah branch out and go to Japan because not many people do it and uh, maybe this is another question as well why do people from England not necessarily tend to go it's more the Kiwis Australians South Africans yeah. but I think that they're more inclined the Japanese teams to sign big second rows like yourself so why do you think that is is there a reason why maybe you and Goody have changed and Freddie Burns have changed the narrative around players going to Japan from England um Tough one. Like they definitely go for different reasons. I reckon uh, a pr predominant one probably would be cash. Uh, there is decent <laughs> cash out there. Uh, yeah. but I think it just depends who you are and what like what your motives are. Like I, I was in a good position at, at Saris. Uh, you know, I had another year, um, uh, and I, you know, I could have could well have stayed there. Um, but I think like the point you you mentioned there was like. What's it like, you know, getting outside the bubble? I think that's precisely what I what I needed to do. Um, yeah, I, I mentioned a good while back to Eddie. Uh, mentioned a good while back to um, Mark McCall and Nigel that uh, I'd be looking to go somewhere when I'm around thirty. Uh, and kind of fast forward a couple of years, this is exactly what what I'm doing. So I, I give them enough kind of heads up, uh, asked for their advice, and 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 so on, especially with Eddie, who was. You know, clearly uh, coached and knows a lot about Japan. Um, but yeah, like, I want a lot, of, a lot of different reasons. Uh, good money, uh, a good amount of time off. You know, as as jumping second rows. You know, the impact on our bodies. Uh, oh, I know. Oh, I know. <laughs> anything? Anything there? I'll just chuck it out there to tee you up. Oh, we, we can talk about that. Well, I know I didn't get the option to go to Japan. I don't even think I would have been able to walk off the plane, George, with the amount of training that to do for you. But anyway, it's not about me, it's about you. So keep going. Exactly. Uh, and like, look, I, I've grown up in Dorking. I've lived in St Albans for, for 12 years. So I'd be pretty disappointed if I'd only been like in those two spaces, which is pretty much London for the whole of my life. So when, when I look at you personally as well, are you going to look to come back at some point? Is this a short term fix or is it just play it by air and? see what happens. Like, what does your mm. kind of short-term future look like? Um, short-term, I've got the option to take another uh, year out here next year. Um, so i, I just got to make decisions around that. Um, I know I'll probably distance myself a bit from like Lions and bits like that. I'm still, um, you know, I'd still be unbelievably keen to, 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 to get involved in, uh, in some part. Um, but I, I know I'm not Unrealistic. I understand what you know what this decision has done. And you see the Lions tour in the summer. Is that a realistic ambition? Are you in good enough shape? Because I, I, I mean that with the utmost respect. You've gone there to have a little bit more downtime. Uh, the rugby is yeah. very different from what I hear. The, the pitches that you play on, the, the kind of tackles that go in as well, the low tackles on the old ankles and knees. But like, what kind of shape are you in? If you were called upon to go on yeah. a Lions tour, because we know that Warren, well, one is a fan of yours, but 
you know, secondly, it's a tour to South Africa, so it suits essentially the way that you play the game. Are you in yeah. good enough shape to go there if you were called up upon? Mate, I've had an eight-month pre-season. I'm, I'm in cracking neck. Um, I'm just going on the neck. I don't know why I'm basing it on the, on the small neck. What do you mean small neck? It's the lighting. I've got to go back like that just to show Gatlin. Mean, still watch this. Gatlin will watch this. He must be bored if he's watching this. <laughs> uh, what, uh, what sort of shape? I'm, I, mate, my body's feeling good. Like uh, I think the, the time off is, you know, it's quite nice to walk around and not be, uh, you know, a little bit stiff most days. So um, body's, been, body's feeling good. And I, I'm like, you do get these horror stories of like either Japan or, or your, I guess your time in France, maybe you would have witnessed a few things. Uh, we are extremely lucky. And I guess it's, well, I did a fair chunk of research into who would be like, I guess, uh, leading a lot of it, but also on the on the strength and conditioning side, like who's leading that, what 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 the crack is there, uh, and we're you know we're we're really um, we've got a great a great outfit here to be honest. Uh, they don't we're not getting murdered like this is pre season time, and you know I, I've heard rumours of other lads doing twenty k in the first two days of, of their of their week, which is um, you know that's that's like ruin your knees time, so. We're very fortunate. I think we've been managed un unbelievably well. We're on a on a down week at the moment, so um, you know training's quite light this week. Yeah, it's it's, it's good. It's pleasing. So I'll go. I, so we'll just go for a, a one line answer. Do you want to go on the Lions tour in the summer if the opportunity's there? Do you want to go? Did I thought, I, did we I can influence this. You dodged it. Do you want to go on the tour in the summer? What is it? is this clickbait? Is it? No, it's not clickbait. It could, well, it could do. George Cruz wants to go on the Lions tour with Captain Maratoji of the British and Irish Lions. Probably. Yeah. Well, look, it'd be stupid to say not. Uh, I'd love to do it. Um, uh, like I said, I know that I'll probably distance myself a little bit, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'll be putting in the graph to make sure if if selected, then uh, you know I'll be I'll be uh, in in decent shape. Let's have a look at. England. I don't know if you've. I don't know if you've seen the games there or kind of seen the yeah. media and everything that people are speaking about about how boring the games are at the minute. I. I don't think that. I'm a little bit kind of old school. I like the kicking aspects. I like the tactical side of things. I think for the rugby neutral, there's an air of frustration around the amount of kicking and the set piece. Have you seen any of the games? If so, what do you yeah. think of it? Yeah, I, I've watched them. Uh, I think. I mean, like. They're there to win games. Like I don't, I, there, there is, I guess, a sense of you want to please the crowd and so on. But like, like, like you got to, you want to win trophies and you want to win, you want to win games. So, if there's a style of play that is working better in a certain uh, area for you against certain teams, or if there's a style of play that you know you're more dominant at the moment, then you got to, you got to double down on that and and make it work for you. Um, I think it's look, media got to write about something clearly, uh, and and like a, a a team that is winning comfortably uh, in you know and playing tactically smart and well is not as I guess uh, pleasing, you know, than a team that is uh, that is you know chucking the ball around and, and you know maybe a tighter game and you know and a bit more exciting like that. So uh, like I, I think it's well, it's exactly what they're going after, isn't it? So that brings me on to this week's game against France. It's the final. What are your experiences of playing France? They're a slightly different look to how they've been in recent weeks, bar the Italy game, mm. because of the the kind of friction, I suppose, and not the friction, the laws and the regulations they've got in France with the league and the FFR. But what are your mm. experiences of playing against France? And then I'm looking forward to this week's final in the Autumn Nations Cup. Um, France above like, above all other nations, they're the ones that can just like just turn it on at any point. You don't really know when it's coming or how it's coming, but like there's just they'll get some big forwards around the corner, and then suddenly like one of their big backs will 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 absolutely tear you apart, and you'll and you, you'll be standing there thinking, like, how's that happened? So uh, it, it 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 I guess it makes for a good game, knowing that um, England could like play more tactically, play a, a, a I wouldn't say a boring game, play a, play a more tactical game. Um, but then France, you know, they've got that that thing where they can just something can happen out of any any passage of play from you know their five meter line to, to your your uh, goal line. So interesting game, yeah, it'll be a good one.
do you think England? I was going to about to say we. I don't know why. <laughs> was about we, to because, say we. we because you originally had a, a an England rose on, uh, tattooed on your arm, but then got it changed for a thistle, wasn't it? I'm a Scottish man. That's what happens. I didn't know who I was all them years ago. And then how good are this England team? You look at the profile of it. There's a load of talk around the back row. You've yeah. played with you've played with these guys. You know, and I think you would have seen the frustration for guys like Sam Simmons, you know, Don Brandt uh, last year or the year before. Jack Willis is in the mix. I'm talking about the back row because of the strength and depth there. But mm. when you look at the makeup of this England team, how much growth is in it and how far can they go under Eddie Jones? Uh, I think look, the thing that's like quite interesting is uh, the way Eddie in the last kind of four years has introduced players, uh, like, you know, pick a squad of whatever the squad is, 30 people, 20 of them will be players that, you know, he knows are going to start, knows are going to play. Uh, but then 10 of them will be those, that, that younger crop, which, you know, in a couple of years' time could well be really pushing the, the person above them. Um, I think that over a long period of time, like the last three or four years, you're now seeing the people who were kind of in that 10 bracket uh, of like younger guys who can push, like actually now really genuinely pushing you know the, the the senior guys who have been there for a little bit longer so when you get that competition like regularly uh and and in depth then you can you can start to pick sides which you know will win against a certain type of team so if you need a heavier team you can you can tailor it towards that but then also you know injuries become less you know less of an impact um and you you know you get that depth and like the better your general squad is the better uh you know the the, the the team going out on the weekend gets prepared for you know through training and so on because uh, a lot of it I, I think happens in the week uh, and the better squad you've got to train the the better the outcome of the game four five four twenty three three twenty two or whatever it is CBD or CBE talk to us a little about the business because mate you're normally in the shadows of media we know that. You don't like doing the media too much, but I think you also understand yeah. that in the business world that in order to propel the business forward, you need to be yeah. doing these uncomfortable interviews to propel the business forward. So you and Dom Day, mate, it looks like it's going really well. Can you give us an outline? Is there any royalties coming my way for giving you the time off years ago to go and do your business? No royalties. Uh, we're we're going to do a um, we're going to do an investment round in six months' time. So if you if you want, you can save up for that uh, and and invest uh, legitimately um but yeah I, look mate it, it's it's going well uh it's something i'm i am genuinely really passionate about i think uh we're coming to a spot where we've just launched a nutrition so four five nutrition and that's ties in with like wellness stuff so vitamin d3s vit c's multivits probiotics fish oils um and i think like there look we're going for like top quality product so good premium product the other two areas which we're focusing on are, are big for us and, and something which probably that someone like yourself is quite uh, interested in terms of firstly the, the, the charity side of it, uh, making sure that there's appropriate amounts of, of actually genuine, uh, like a genuine angle, which makes a difference rather than a, a token social piece. So we're, we're really like, I guess, proud in a weird way to, to uh, for, for our donations and so on to be, I guess, hurting us a little bit in terms of like it, it is a it is a margin sacrifice we are like we had to take that on board and, and look at that as a you know and forecast that properly uh but then the other side is like we're creating a, a club of i guess athletes not uh not ambassadors uh definitely athletes which kind of uh is, is looking a little bit deeper into uh, i guess the, the stuff that we got the privilege to have at saris which is like you know what happens post career um how we, how can we share our, our network how can we again genuinely make a difference to to help an athlete who you know might be coming to the end of their career or is right at the beginning of their career and is like stuff full of like people's biased opinions and and, and that so so for me it's 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 exciting because uh i get to lead on uh, on the that, that sort of like club club side of it um which is something again like i said i'm pretty passionate about um and yeah i think on the cbd side it's good we got into another 60 boot stores the other day so um retail stuff's all quite interesting i think the biggest thing is just be, like, meeting ridiculous people you know like it, it like you say inside our bubble at saris or, or at saris for the last 10 or 12 years like it's quite easy just to stay inside that bubble and you don't really like, i think 
an area where athletes are really exposed is once they, you know, try and step outside that bubble. So the sooner you can do that, the better. And I think that's what we're trying to encourage uh, people, not just in rugby, but athletes in, in, in other sectors as well. Thank <laughs> you.